My love of Japan runs very, very deep. And the literature that comes out of this wonderful country is one of the reasons that I'm drawn to it. My latest foray into Japanese literature is Journey Under the Midnight Sun, written by Keigo Higashino. This book was given to me by Mrs. B as a birthday present. So what is this book all about? And more importantly, is it any good? Well, here is the blurb. When a man is found murdered in an abandoned building in Osaka in 1973, unflappable detective Sasagaki is assigned to the case. He begins to piece together the connection of two young people who are inextricably linked to the crime. The dark, taciturn son of the victim and the unexpectedly captivating daughter of the main suspect. Over the next 20 years, we follow their lives as Sasagaki pursues the case, which remains unsolved, to the point of obsession. Now, I took this book camping with me for a three-day trip, and I read just over half of its 539 pages during those three days of camping. So that gives you an indication as uh, to how much I enjoyed this book. Right from the get-go, I feel like it pulled me in, and I felt that uh, Higashino's writing style is that style that just flows off the page and into your head. He's got a knack of communicating a lot of information in a short amount of time. And I think this is one of the reasons why this book really drew me in. You quickly come up to speed with all of the characters and their environment and how everything connects together. What I struggled with with this book was the sheer number of main characters. I think I counted 20 in total. And they've all got crisscrossing timelines and stories and paths. And I found myself many, many times flipping back through a number of pages to remind myself of who was who and where they fit in with some of the other characters. So uh, I did find a, a, have a bit of a struggle with that. And then I got a bit annoyed by how at the end of the book, there was a number of characters and storylines that were set up early on in the book that had no real resolution. It was like for the amount of uh, page space that they took up earlier on in the story, you kind of thought that they would have a much bigger payoff at the end. And uh, in many cases, they didn't. So it felt to me like, many of those stories and parts could have been cut out and there wouldn't have been any effect on what happened at the end. I guessed the ending of the book uh, very early on in the story. So when the ending came, when it all wrapped up, I did find it a little bit underwhelming. But all of that said, even though the ending was a little bit underwhelming, I really enjoyed the ride to get there. The bulk of the book is really, really interesting. It re reminded me a lot of 1Q84 written by uh, Haruki Murakami. It's like a Murakami book, but without all of the uh, the Murakami weirdness. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really, really fascinating read. So for me, this is not so much a recommendation as it is a wrecker warn <laughs> in that you might feel a little bit cheated by the end, but you will most likely really enjoy the ride to get there. <music>